Good evening, everyone. I'm going to bring this Lawndale City Council meeting to order. I'm going to ask the city clerk to give the roll call. Madam City Clerk. All right. Good evening. Mayor Pro Tem Cuevas. Present. Council Member Suarez. Here. Council Member Kearney. Here. Council Member Hoffman Gorman. Here. Mayor Poland Miles. Present. All members are present. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. With that, we're going to have our Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to ask um, Councilwoman Hoffman Gorman to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a word of inspiration by Pastor Dwight Dudley from the Cavalry Chapel of South Bay. If everyone could stand right hand over the heart and recite along with me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please remain standing. Good evening, family. It's good to be here today, and I just wanted to share with you a couple of words from the Word of God. And when I think of this council and all of you who come and serve this great city, I, I really do thank you for the work that you're doing. But the work of the Lord is this. He says, fulfill you my joy that ye like-minded, having the same love, being one accord with one mind. And that's what this council does. You guys pull together all the pieces and all the parts and all the things that need to come together to conduct a business that is good for all as we just pledged one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's what you do. And I'm so proud to be here today. Father, I thank you for these men and women of this council, the mayor, the board, all that will take place here tonight because I know that they have you, they have the heart of the city, and they have the mind to be alike in decisions that will bring this city to a different place, Father, as they grow together and as they build a community that's good for all the people who come and reside here. I thank you, Father, for them for always thinking towards you, having a pastor come and pray. I thank you, Father, for this city. I ask you to pour out blessing on blessing, grace on grace, mercy on mercy, and show them what you desire for this city to look like, as I know they have that like mind. They want something wonderful, terrific, that has comfort and peace in a great city for all of those that reside here. I thank you for him. I ask you to give him wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and a course of direction. We thank you and praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, for being here tonight. Thank you, Pastor Dudley. Okay, we have a couple of presentations um, tonight, recognizing some outgoing um, uh, members of the citizen Okay, the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, which is a committee that uh, was designed to um, help us with um, issues concerning um, citizens, uh, senior citizens. It was formed by the City Council to provide information and advice on programs and services that is wanted and needed by our, our senior and population. Uh, the senior citizens meet monthly, and they are a, a vital component to understand the needs of the senior community here in the city of Lawndale. The following individuals have served with distinction and honor. We're going to honor them tonight with a little plaque um, for their, their service being on the, the committee. We got, um, I'm not sure if everyone's here, but I'm going to ask that when we get finished, we're going to, I'll take a picture with everyone, those who are available. Edna McCuerta, is she here? If, well, she still served from November 18, to, um, 2019 to February 28, 2023. We want to thank her for her service. Oscar, I saw Oscar but now. Um, Oscar, thank you for your service from June 7, 2010 February, to February 28, 2023. And Teresa Garcia, I don't think she's here. I didn't see Teresa. Um, she served from August 1, 2011 to February 28. 2023. And of course, our First Lady Emeritus. I wonder who is that? <laughs> there she is. Miss Hoffman, Doris Hoffman, thank you for your service. She served 
from July 21st, 2014 to February 28, 23. We want to thank these four individuals for their services. And we have the look, we got plaques and we have, we got two different kind of plaques. See that? If you want to join us, if you will, join us here at the podium, we'll, we'll take a picture together. I don't think Teresa has made it tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't we spell it correctly? <laughs> <laughs> right. Can we put uh, Robert in the middle? In the middle? Okay, yeah. We'll take a picture. Thank you guys for your, your search. We'll take a picture. Okay, let's have our public safety report from Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. And Sergeant. Turn that off here, hold on. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council. I'm here tonight to present the public safety report for April 3rd through April 17th. Uh, last council meeting, there were some questions from the council regarding okay to books and time that was spent for arrest made in Lawndale. And unfortunately, the Sheriff's Department doesn't track it that way. So to find out that number, I would have to go back and find out every single person that was arrested, got booked, if they, and then if they needed medical clearance for booking, which is a, uh, it's a hefty, hefty task. So we don't, I don't have the answer for you. Um, and then the council also inquired about a Facebook for the station. And yes, the station does have Facebook. It's under South Los Angeles Station, and so anything pertinent to Londa would be posted there. Um, and then I'll cover arrests during the period. Uh, Deputy Lupins conducted a traffic stop for various vehicle violations near 159th Street and Hawthorne Boulevard in the city of Lawndale. Deputy Lupins conducted a warrantless search of the vehicle pursuant to the probation conditions of one of the occupants, and he discovered a loaded firearm on the floorboard of the vehicle. He ended up arresting one of the occupants for possession of the firearm, and the person he arrest, arrested was not a Lawndale resident. Uh, another deputy Lupin's arrest where he conducted a traffic stop again for various vehicle violations uh, on Inglewood Avenue and Manhattan Beach Boulevard. Uh, deputy Lupin searched the vehicle and found suspected methamphetamine, suspected cocaine base, sus suspected black tar heroin, suspected pressed opioid pills, a large amount of United States currency and scales, 
The, the driver was arrested for various drugs, drug related charges, and the driver was not a Lawndale resident. Uh, Deputy Ariola conducted a traffic stop of vehicle, vehicle for various vehicle code violations near 156th Street and Fremont Avenue. Uh, upon contact with the driver, he observed a firearm in plain view inside the vehicle. During a further search of the vehicle, he discovered suspected fentanyl. And the driver was arrested for weapon and drug charges, and the driver was a Lawndale resident. That concludes my report for this week, and I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you for that report. Are there any questions of the sergeant's report? Lieutenant? Lieutenant, right? No, Sergeant. Sergeant? Okay. Thank Sergeant. you, though. All right. <laughs> hey, I was just testing you. We appreciate your report. Thank you so much. All right. All right. All right. Next item on our agenda is oral communications. This is when you have the opportunity to speak to this body on items that are not on the agenda. If you'd like to speak to this body on items that are not on the agenda, you may do so at this time. We ask that you line up by the flag. When it becomes your turn, you don't have to wait for your name to be called. Just simply approach the podium. If you will start with your name first, we would appreciate that. At about two and a half minutes, the amber light will come on, and that will give you a signal to start wrapping things up. Let's have our first speaker. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Haley Hutt. I'm here representing Assemblymember Tina McKenna's office, the 61st District. I am the representative for this area of the city of Lawndale. So I just wanted to come, show my face, say hello to everyone, and introduce myself so we all um, can introduce ourselves to each other and you'll be seeing me more often. It's nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Dina, Lawndale resident. I'm just going to wing it since I know we have chickens on the agenda tonight. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to ask, I don't know where the public works is, uh, where I live is a cul-de-sac. We used to have a sign, no outlet, which was knocked down. But, and then they removed the little metal stem, but now it's filled in with concrete. And I don't know if we're going to get the sign replaced or not. I had a, one of those limousine party vans ended up in the block, which had a heck of a time turning around. And also, thank you for putting the bulk number on the website. A neighbor has, I don't know if she doesn't want to call. Is that the number to directly to our waste, um, you know, our trash pickup? Right now it's a, uh, what is it, portable or uh, basketball hoop. Now it's in the gutter waiting for bulk pickup. Well, another neighbor moved it last Thursday for street sweeping, but now it's back in the gutter. So I appreciate the number. I'll probably end up calling myself since I don't, somebody's going to hit that thing at night. It's, you know, dark. Hmm. Also, uh, I just, there's something else. I wanted to go over, I know the school citation thing was an issue <coughs> last meeting. I like Kearney's idea when he suggested the three different drop-offs. It makes sense. Why don't they give that a shot? at least like a test run to see if it works or not. It sounds good. Um, I don't have kids, but it also, it doesn't just affect, you know, the people that have kids and are in a hurry to drop kids off. It affects other people when they have to get out in the morning and go to an appointment or what have you. They do a lot of nonsense that creates a lot of issues for just regular drivers and stuff trying to go to work or an appointment or whatever. Um, I also wanted to touch real quick on, um, since all the rain and everything, maybe you guys could put in something. I know you have the dog licensing or animal fair coming up. A lot of foxtails right now in bloom and coming also. Maybe if we can, you know, put out something on that, the, the dangers and the hazards for the animals and what have you. And maybe we can, you know, get some of that trimmed, I don't know, with our public works on different. I know people don't take care of their parkways and what have you, although they let their dogs do their business and and everything else, but if we can get, you know, look into some of that, so that's my light. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you about the Metro Sea Line extension. Oh, Nassima Darwi, and uh, a Landale resident. 
Uh, Say your name one more time for us. Nasima Darwe. Okay. Darwe. Thank you, Nasima. Um, one thing that I in the uh, DIR wasn't mentioned was the um, any kind of emergency response in case of a um, natural disaster like an earthquake, uh, any derailment. Uh, nothing has been mentioned. It's kind of worrying me, knowing that we are living on 171st Street and the corridor is very sh uh, narrow on that part. And then um, wondering if they do have the train going on row, uh, God forbid. But if they do, um, what what are the measures um, keeping us the residents safe in case? Um, also, I would like to know if maybe uh, the city of Landell could actually try to change their um, opinion or. Um, on the uh, metro and of the no metro uh, in Londell and having going more for the um, author and option. Um, it would allow us to negotiate maybe better with metro uh, versus uh, no, um, no met nothing, I mean, no train. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Michael Kim, Lawndale resident. And uh, I'd like to ag agree uh, with the previous speaker with regards to uh, joining with uh, Redondo Beach in the stance of uh, using the Hawthorne option as the preferred option for the South Bay cities. And uh, I think uh, two cities joined together uh, like a coalition uh, would would have more of an impact as opposed to a divided uh, uh, two cities going with two different options. My my thoughts on that. But I'd also like to talk about uh, this large milestone coming up called the Los Angeles Olympics, where uh, the city of Los Angeles must meet uh, certain deadlines in order to support the uh, the Olympics such as uh, the people mover in LAX and the one going to uh, the, this football stadium. Uh, <clears throat> those, those projects must be completed in time for, for the uh, Olympics and um, to, to, for Metro to be spread thin by trying to start this project up, uh, I think it's, it's just unwise for the city of Los Angeles and it includes us. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, they already pulled away resources from an overpass that they wanted to uh, build over, I think, Florence in a congested part of Inglewood. They just scrapped and abandoned that entire project. They were already uh, deep into that one. The EIR completed and it was already approved. And they just said, you know what, let's stop that. Let's focus on the people mover. So I, I think uh, we should also uh, ask Metro to to think about kind of finishing uh, the projects that they haven't had and, and not to try to juggle too many balls in the air, too many projects all at once, and, and so that uh, um, they come up with a safer solution uh, in, in the long term that'll serve people. And, you know, it, I, they might learn some things from the Olympics. Maybe uh, they'll have some comments from people that visit and they might say, hey, this, we, we like this type of, uh, 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 train, train environment, stop, I don't know. Um, and uh, at least that'll buy us some time in order to uh, uh, maybe get more public support. We've been noticing more uh, public support lately, um, but last summer you can hear crickets at those metro meetings, so I, I think uh, uh, that that's just going to help us in the long term. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Chelsea Schreiber, 4702 West 163rd Street, Lawndale Gnome King. I came more prepared than I was last time. Um, we have signs. We have 100 signs coming this week. We already got rid of 100. Um, more people want them, so we ordered more. Um, we are still fundraising for the No to Row. Um, we want to raise $2,500 to get two buses to bring citizens to um, the Metro board meeting in June or July. We're still not sure which one that is. So if anybody wants to donate, um, 
go to Lawndale Gnome King Instagram. There's a GoFundMe too um, that's linked on the Gnome King Instagram as well. Um, also, uh, I just want to encourage you guys to agendize an item to vote on an option. I, of course, would like you to vote on the Hawthorne option, but any option, just voting on something so that when the Metro Board does vote, in June that they know that Lawndale has a stance that isn't just no trains at all. So I just, I think there's four council meetings before that if they vote in June and if they vote in July, um, six. So we gotta do that soon. So I would just am begging you to do that because I think that is so important for our city to take a stand on that. And um, the citizens, everybody I talk to along the row, uh, nobody wants it coming along the row. Also. I would say maybe 50% of the people that I talk to have no idea that this project is in the works. So we're writing letters to homeowners right now and spending our fundraising money on sending letters to people. So it's just, we just, I, we're working so hard to get the word out. I'm not sleeping because I have a baby, but I'm not sleeping because I'm worried about this at the same time. And I think that this is so important and it will affect our quality of life. And I'm just begging you guys to take a stand. I'm begging you guys to take a stand to not have a good on their own, have a good on Hawthorne Boulevard, but any stand at all I think is super important for our city to say. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, we will be uh, fundraising with gnomes too soon, so. <laughs> but do they roam though? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a gnome if it doesn't roam, right? Yes, sir. Hey, my name is Morrison Lucas again. I'm sure you all remember me. I'm sorry, say your name again. For uh, sorry, my name is Morrison Lucas. Um, I'm here, of course, to complain about parking citations. It's a long-term project. I have a citation of today today. Today is number 611. This was issued about five minutes after the one I brought to you last week. Here you can see a, a vehicle is waiting in, in, the, in the flow of traffic, paused, waiting to get into the parking lot. In this case, the reason the vehicle is paused is because it's waiting to let another vehicle out. It seems like this is safe and legal driving behavior. There's nothing crazy going on. No one is getting in or out on the street. Nonetheless, this was a $38 citation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, good evening. Uh, John Shriver of 163rd Street. Um, I don't mean to keep coming and beating the same drum, but um, I also encourage you guys to, at some point, agendize the Metro Green Line and try to come up with a plan of what you're gonna support. Um, I think you only have four meetings left now before the Metro Board meeting where they're gonna make the final decision, so unfortunately the clock is ticking. Um, also, I'm gonna to bring to your attention, I don't know if you guys knew, but the, what are they called? They're the, um, Metro South Bay City Service Council met last month and they actually wrote an official letter supporting the row option. And I listened to their meeting. Um, they're very dismissive of Lawndale. Um, I don't know if you guys know that they wrote this letter. Um, they're, all they were really concerned about was that they would have to drag their suitcases up a staircase at the Galleria. And that's why they don't want the Hawthorne option. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are in touch with that council or if you have any sway on their opinions, but. They seem to be taking a very uninformed opinion on the Metro Green Line, and they're speaking for our city, which I think is a shame. So I encourage you guys to look at that. And um, I don't want to just come here and complain. I want to focus on good stuff, too. So I thank you for the good Easter egg hunt. I brought my four-year-old son to that uh, on Easter, and it was a very good event. So I thank the city for putting that on. Th thank you. Hello, my name is Mary Tagoni. I just want to say no to the word because you guys do that, and then will go down the hill. So I have to say. Thank you. Hi, I'm Denise, and I'm asking the council to say no to the row. And like Mary's been here since 1974, so it really means a lot to her. And she, was an, she came from Italy. And the, even the flag, just even saying that she pledges to the flag, it means so much to her. Mm -hmm. And for, for you guys to, to not even vote and even attempt to help out the, the, 
the Hispanics, the Italians, all diversity. You know, it's really important to think of everyone that doesn't have no clue on what's going on. And I'm asking if you guys can agenda and genderize an item for the upcoming council meeting to vote for an option for no row or yes to the Hawthorne, just so we know. And, you know, we're running out of time because it's coming up in June or July. So, no to the row. No to the row. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll close public comments and we'll bring up the diocese for any comments from the council. Let's start with um, Hoffman Gorman. First off, thank you to everybody that came out tonight to speak. We really appreciate hearing from all of you. I'm gonna take a couple of items and then I'm gonna ask our city manager if he has anything that he would like to say in regards to Metro. So um, first off, Dina, your sign. I'm sure that they're going to work and try to figure out if it needs to be replaced and why <laughs> you're left in that predicament. And Foxtails, I agree with you. Um, being involved with my vet, I know that the problems that Foxtails give our critters both in their ears and in their noses. And so you're right, that is an issue. Um, we had a lot of speakers tonight on the Metro. I will say for Nazima, I, I have voiced oftentimes, I'm in the medical field myself, and I am absolutely concerned about the emergency response and how that could interrupt. And it's not just in a major earthquake, it's in every time that that quadrant suffers a heart attack or a stroke, and we have to wait for a train that's going by 192 times a day. So I have my own concerns on that and I share that with you. So I want you to, to know that. I'm hearing you. Um, I'm going to also stop right there and um, say to all of you, please, please, please communicate with the Metro voting members and their, their deputies of transportation. The mayor and I do sit on a subcommittee and we are approaching and speaking to every Metro member, voting member, or their deputy of transportation. So they are hearing us. Uh, we have several still to go though and we are talking about what is coming next on, on that issue. Um, Mr. Lucas, your citation, have you brought that up to Michael? This one that you just brought up tonight? Is this a new one? Okay. So, this is All right. All right. Well, I would encourage anybody that receives a citation right now to contact the city if they have a discrepancy with it. Otherwise, the city can't speak on that particular issue. Sean, do you have anything that you can add on the Metro? Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council Members. I'll be brief on this item. We've discussed it quite often recently. Um, so we, we know uh, we recently, I sent an email to the council concerning some comments made by Metro, Mark Durkin, if I pronounce his name correctly, but they mentioned at the COG or one of the meetings, it's in the minutes that they only have less than a billion dollars. Um, so fund it that they think they have available, that they have available that's financially available to build it. And that would be for the row option. The row option they proposed to us is that $1.93 billion. So we don't even know if they have the money just to build it on the row. Um, to build it on the Hawthorne is about almost $3 billion, and they definitely don't have the funding for that. So we understand and appreciate everyone's comments. We don't think rationally. I mean, we're, we're not the Metro Board, but we don't think they have the funding for the Hawthorne route. We, they barely have the funding based on what they've said and based on our research. Um, 
to build it on the row, if, if in fact at all. We have filed our comments. It's a lengthy uh, comment letter. Um, this process is still going forward uh, with them in terms of when they go to the hearing, our understanding is they're not gonna take an action. They're gonna pick an alternative and then come back with the final EIR later on, months later. Um, that's to be determined. But we are definitely, we've been bird dogging the project for years. We're still bird dogging the project. The subcommittee still on board with meeting the Metro board members and we are still moving forward, um, trying to work with them on a solution. I don't know where we'll end up, but we're trying to get things worked out with them. So we, we something that's that works for all. But it again, as I just mentioned, previous meeting, they promised they were gonna trench it and put some kind of top on it and then um, on the row. And then now that we've, they've kind of backed off on that. There's not much mention of a top or, and you know, there's mention of a trench, but their, their main focus is on the row. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, I just wanna thank the six young ladies that spoke tonight and the three gentlemen. Uh, I think Rhonda touched on everything, but I'd, uh, I'd like to thank Haley for coming down here from Holly Mitchell's office and introducing herself. And with that, I pass it on. Thank you. Madam um, Councilman Torres. I'd like to thank everybody that came out tonight. I do have a question, um, and I think our city manager briefly spoke a little bit about it, but in terms of, I, and I don't know if this would be at a public meeting or a closed session, how it impacts us to actually make a decision, um, knowing that with if they do pick any option, we're going to want the best mitigation measures and possibly possibly litigate. And so I guess my question would be, is that something that we could discuss and would it be in a public setting or would it be in a closed session? Uh, you know, Mayor and Council, right now we don't know what option they're going to pick until June or July. So right now, taking any position, you know, based on our, our review of the project would be somewhat premature until we know which route they're going to choose. At this time, we do not know what route. We think, based on their funding and based on their limitations, they're most likely going to go for the, the row route. But, you know, it's totally up to the Metro Board where, where you know, they make that decision. But it looks like most likely that's the one they're going to pick rationally. But, but I would want to know if we made a decision, yeah. how that would impact further negotiations if they were to litigate. So I guess this, I guess this is more for our city attorney. Um, is that something we could discuss and would that be something? Let me give some thought to that. Okay. Um, and if, if I think it's something that is better for open session, I'll advise the city manager that way and better for closed session, I'll advise him so that he can, can set the agenda for that. Okay. Thank you. And the only reason why I ask that is because I, I don't know, you know, if they choose the Hawthorne route, we're still going to want, you know, the best um, um, mitigation measures pos as possible, um, you know, or if they pick the row, you know. And so I, I guess that's the reason why I want to know how it imp impacts that before, um, how, that, how that works, because we're still going to, you know, we're still going to have a fight um, regardless um, and try and get the best for our city. Um, and then also, I, I want to thank um, Michael for your comments. That is something that um, I've had similar thoughts is if they only have, and I've heard they only have 800,000. Um, and so it, it, it's at that, if that's the case, and you're, why not use it towards something that people are actually going to use um, that leads to somewhere, that leads to arenas and, and whatnot and with Inglewood. So, you know, and I, I, I think even, We've had people even suggest that to them casually. I, I don't know if that's something that we could even push for to um, using the money some elsewhere. Um, and then I think, let me see. I think that's it. Um, that's all I had to say, but thank you everybody that came out. Mayor, Mayor Council, um, we did suggest that as a heads up. We sent an email to uh, Metro as an alternative. That was my idea though. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> We sent it about two weeks ago. We sent it over and said if they could loan it to, uh, they could use the less than a billion around that uh, for the project. I think it's related to the project in Inglewood. Very good, very good. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tim Cuevas. Um, thank you everybody for coming out and speaking. I do, I would like to know also if it 
we could have an open session or a closed session to discuss our stand um, because whether we like it or not, we need to be together on a decision, whether it's the row or Hawthorne Bulbar, as a council, we need to decide. It's gonna go through. A no stance, it's not gonna help us anymore. So the five of us need to get on the same page and try to decide which option we wanna do, whether it's today or 20 years from now, it's gonna happen. So if we could put something in the agenda, hopefully if it's open session or closed session, uh, to discuss it prior to their decision, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that will be all, thank you. That's it, okay. Thank you. Um, I too wanna thank everyone who came out tonight and those who um, had the opportunity to speak. I wanna thank um, Haley um, Hutt for, um, for stopping uh, um, by from the office of Assembly Member Tina McKenna. We look forward to um, working with that office as well as um, Haley as the field deputy for the city of uh, Lawndale. Um, we appreciate her being the uh, field deputy and we look forward to working with her. Um, thank you for uh, continuing on, on, the, um, on this uh, metro, um, metro issues. We need some soldiers and I'm glad you guys are out there really making this happening, putting the word on the streets so people, not, not just the words, but also the signs on the streets so that people are fully aware of this project and how it's gonna affect um, our community. So I wanna thank each and last one of you for you know, the countless hours that you've spent on this project. And we're gonna to continue um, to work um, together to get the, the best project if we have to have a project um, in the city of Lawndale. So I, I wanna thank you all for that. I too um, believe that if, if Metro, if they don't have all the, the funds that they, that they need on this project rather than keeping those funds stored somewhere, locked away somewhere, it should go to a, another project um, that will, in fact, be used, and that's the Inglewood um, Connector um, project. So the Inglewood Connector project, that's, um, there's no question that that project is gonna be uh, um, used because it's gonna bring people down to the entertainment um, sports um, district um, in the city of, of Inglewood. And they can use um, that funding, I think it would be actually better suited you know, um, in the city of Inglewood. I did have a discussion with, this, with the uh, Mayor Butts, um, this was maybe a month or so ago, about this project. Uh, I'm not sure how that works in terms of if they have the ability to do, do so. I'm not really sure on the legalities of that or what have you, but if, it, if, it, if it's possible, and they're looking for an alternative um, to where they can um, use the money where it's gonna be best suited, I think they should look to our neighbors on um, Inglewood. Um, for that project, so I would advocate um, for that as well. Um, other than that, yes, I, I do, as I stated earlier, think it's time that we do take a position on the, um, one of the um, alternatives. With that, the only other thing I wanted to add was, I think we did um, mention, did we mention about the, the, the no outlet sign, that they were gonna replace those signs or whatever that Dana brought up, did we? Did I miss, miss that? No, Mayor, but we'll definitely take care of it. I'll follow up with Public Works. Okay, very good. Okay, and that's all I have, and I'll swing it back to the... Just one thing. Can we yes, also include two agenda is possibly sponsoring a bus <coughs> to the Metro meeting, the city? I think that might... Yes, we could put that on, too. And next item on the agenda is item G, which is our consent calendar. What is the pleasure of this body concerning item G? If there's no corrections, additions, I'll make a motion to. I do have a question. Let's have a okay. question first. Uh, regarding the expenses, what is the budget for the expenses? Is it the ledger kind of threw me off for a bit um, since there's a couple of dealerships involved. Yeah, no problem. I can answer that. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so you'll see on the ledger there's one for AutoNation Ford. It's about 40000 so that's one truck. 
And then there's one for Airport Marina, around 73,000. That's for one truck and one for the escape. Okay. So that's three on this register. And um, there's two more, I believe, that are in process. So there's going to be more. But again, these are all funded through the ARPA money. So it's uh, not affecting the general fund. Thank you. Yeah, my, my question was that 70. Yeah, Because sure. I was on like two dealership and the same truck. Yeah. It's kind of. Yeah. So one was a truck and one was a Ford Escape. Thank you. Okay. Yes. With sir. that question being answered, I'll make a motion to accept the yeah. consent down as written. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. The motion is made by um, Kearney that we um, approve the consent calendar. Suarez has second the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none with the council, please vote on the consent calendar. For the consent calendar, the motion passes unanimously. Okay, next item is a public hearing. Consideration to amend the Lawndale Municipal Code establishing rules and regulations to provide for urban dwelling units and urban lot split for single family lots in accordance with Senate Bill 9. Let's have the staff report. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Um, Jose Hernandez, Associate Planner, is gonna read the item uh, for you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, council members. Before okay. us tonight, we have a draft ordinance that was reviewed and also a resolution accompanying this and reviewed by the Planning Commission on res uh, excuse me, March 22, 2023. And with this, there is a resolution 2307 accompanying and recommending the city council approve ordinance number 1199-23. And read as on title on the draft ordinance is a consideration to amend the Lawndale Municipal Code establishing rules and regulations to provide for urban dwelling units and urban lot splits for single family lots in accordance with Senate Bill 9. Uh, before you, we do have recommendations. The recommendations is to conduct the public hearing, determine that the draft ordinance number 1199-23 is exempt from CEQA, and also introduce the first reading as read with ordinance number 1199-23. And with that, I conclude my presentations and I open for further questions or comments. Okay, are thank there you. any, um, thank you for that report. Are there any um, questions of the, the staff on report before we open the public hearing? I'll hold off to after the public hearing. Okay, all right. With that, we'll open the public hearing now. It is 719, the public hearing is open. Is there any wishing to um, testify or provide comments in, th in this manner? Seeing none, it is 717. The public hearing is closed. Let's have some. I do have one question yeah. for uh, who is Jared or Jose? On the uh, second page of it, where it says uh, staff has reviewed Senate Bill 9 and it gives a breakdown of second units will be limited to 800 square foot. At the bottom of that page, it says must provide guest parking at a ratio of half a parking space per unit wasn't it correct me if i'm wrong robert and, and Shirley. wasn't it per how many bedrooms in the unit the parking half is parking spaces or is this a whole different thing it, mr mean, mayor council this is sb9 it's a okay. little different okay. um so we have to follow the state law okay and just so the council knows we only have 25 percent of the city is qualified for yeah. this ordinance yeah. luckily for uh, i mean well some people may not agree but we have two units for almost every lot. So SB9 very limitedly uh, impacts Lawndale, whereas other cities that have a lot of single family, one house on an 8,000 square foot lot. And unfortunately, this is the okay. limitations that's mandated under state law. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I had a quick question. We have an emergency ordinance before this, right? So we're just- Correct, this is, this is uh, to bring that full ordinance okay. to fruition. And okay. if the council wants to recommend okay. uh, approval. Okay. My, my question is, is the state requiring um, parking spaces, additional parking spaces, or is that something the city is requiring? This, the, the draft ordinance that you have before is consistent with the SB9 state legislation, which is being consistent with the requirements. That is okay. correct. As you know, the, um, our code is two-car two garage for each unit. 
but unfortunately under SB 9, we cannot require that. Similar to the ADU, we can't require parking, but this one we do have allows a little bit of parking. Yeah. Okay. You good? We're good. I'm good. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, so what is the pleasure of? Um, I'll go with item. staff recommendation. We did the public hearing. I'll second it. Okay, so the motion's been made that we uh, approve uh, staff recommendation. The first and reading then, title. Yeah, and second it by um, Swords that we do the, um, the introduction of the first reading of the ordinance. And I think that's the only thing it does, right? Yeah, just the first reading of the ordinance. Yeah. So I'm going to ask the city attorney to please read the, the ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is ordinance number 1199-23, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Lawndale, California, amending the Lawndale Municipal Code to add Chapter 16.05 and amend Article 7 of Chapter 17.48, establishing rules and regulations to provide for urban dwelling units and urban lot splits under the R1 zone and a finding of categorical exemption from CEQA. That is the title of the ordinance, and you have waived further reading on the consent calendar tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. Uh, would the council please vote on item six? For item number six, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, madam. Next item, item seven, is also a public hearing. Community development, flat work and landscape permits and fence permit fees update. Thank you, Mayor yes, and Council members. Yes, ma'am. Um, the item before you tonight is the taking a look at the fence and flat work permit fees uh, for reduction as uh, discussed in the February 6th, the 2023 council meeting. Um, staff brought before you the fence and flat work history of the cost of the permits, both for um, from back to when it was recently adopted to the current cost. Um, it was asked of council to um, staff to prepare a reduction of fees as discussed in the previous meeting. A fence permit from 420, which is the current fee, to $50. And the flat work, and la flat work slash landscaping permit from $390 to $75. Um, staff uh, recommends that city council uh, conduct a public hearing and adopt um, Resolution number CC 2304-018, approving the proposed fee reductions for the planning department's <laughs> fence and flat work permit, permit applications. Thank you. That concludes the staff report. Okay. Thank you, madam. Are there any um, questions of the staff report before we open the public hearing? Okay. Seeing none, I will open the public hearing at 722. Public hearing is open. Is there any wishing to testify or provide any comments in this public hearing? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing at 723. The public hearing is here by close. <laughs> is there any discussion on this, this um, item? Item 7. Staff recommendation. Okay. Sounds like you heard none. Okay, so you're making the... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I heard voices. I hear voices all the time. I'll second it. Okay, second. So the motion has been made, <laughs> been made by Kearney and seconded by Hoffman Gorman that we approve the staff recommendation by adopting on said resolution, um, approving the proposed fee reduction for the planning department, yeah, planning department fence and flat work landscape application fees. Is there any discussion on the motion? Say no with the council, please vote. For item number seven, the motion passes with Mayor Pro Tem Cuevas voting no. Thank you. Item item eight, um, the quarterly quarterly investment report for the quarterly year ending March 31st, 2023. Yes, sir. Hey, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. This is the Q3 
uh, investment report ending March 31st. So just to go over numbers real quick, the city has cash and investments of 47 million 95,201. Um, the city's investments are made up of currently right now four categories, basically cash and bank, uh, LAIF, which is the state fund, CDs and US government agency bonds. We have approximately 17.6 million in the checking account, about 23.7 million in LAIF, uh, about 4.7 million in CDs, and another 1 million in US government agency bonds. Um, and you know, you can see the long list of CDs we have is basically split up into three different groups. We have one year or less, which is short term, uh, our medium term, which is one to three years, and then the longer term, three to five years. And then as far as the one million in US government agency bonds, that was just purchased uh, last month. We bought two issues, they're about they're, uh, 500,000 each. And one is earning 5.375%, and the other one is at 5.75%. So both really good interest rates. And one of them is one year and three months, and the other is two year maturities. Uh, so those are you know doing really good. Um, <clears throat> and they are you know they are considered to be risk free and backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Um, looking at CDs, we are going to have two that are coming up for maturity in July, so we'll look to hopefully replacing those. Currently, they're only earning 2% and 2.2, so I'm hoping by that time we'll, we can get two more that are uh, about 5% or so, depending on you know, how the Fed goes with their rates, and so those are constantly moving. So we'll see how it goes, but um, I'm hopeful we'll get about 5%. Um, and then looking at liquidity, the city has 88% um, in uh, call on call deposits, which is uh, you know very liquid, but that's your cash and bank in your LAFE account. And then we have investments for the remaining 12%, um, about 2% in short term, 8.5% in medium, and 1.5% in long term. Um, I do think that we need to bump up the long term a little more. Uh, there's, you know, four CDs in there, they're earning low interest rates, uh, so we need to look into that, So, which I will look at and discuss with Sean, the city manager, and see what we can do there to get some more long-term investments to kind of bump up those as well. Um, and that's all I have. Um, that concludes my report. Any questions? I'm happy to answer. Yes, yes, ma'am. I have one question, because there's, in the staff review, it says, um, that we continue to maintain a majority of cash and lay for the city's checking account. Yes. And, you know, with I guess with the recent, or, you know, a couple months ago with the <coughs> whole, um, the S, what is it, the... Uh, SVB, the yeah, Silicon and, Valley Bank. And the the insurance of the 250000 yeah. Do we keep it all in one or do we use a certain bank um, just to protect? I mean, it sounds like, you know, it worked out where everybody mm -hmm. got, you know, whatever yeah. they had, but... Yeah. Um, so as far as the main bank account, uh, you know, it's there's about it's a, like, there's like 17.3 million in there. There's really so because we are a government, that money is collateralized by the bank at 110 percent by law. They are required to do that. Um, so we're not. It'd be really difficult for us to keep separate bank accounts at 250 each. Our CDs, uh, we do. You know, our policy is less than 250 because those are FDIC insured. So on the CDs, yes, but on the other cash, no, because the bank has collateral requirements behind it. Okay. So yeah. Thank you. Uh, Any Mr. Other questions? Oh, sorry. I was going to mention we work weekly um, on running those numbers, and the council adopted policies on buying those. And Harat and myself go through, and they're very detailed. Yeah. The bank has to meet certain hard requirements, certain corporate requirements, certain financial backing requirements before we even invest in them. And so, and then I look at the interest rates directly with Harat, and we uh, we we argue about you know is this bank safe, or, <laughs> and we don't put in more. Than, I think it's two hundred forty-eight thousand yeah. for each CD, and we are trying to increase that so we can get more interest off the, the amounts. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Concerning the um, quarterly report. Okay, seeing none, the um, staff is Chicken. recommendation is that we receive and file. Yeah, you know. Okay, that's all you. That's all you touching the button. <laughs> okay, well, I'll make a recommendation to receive and okay, file. Okay, without any objection, we'll receive and file the report. 
of the quarterly investment um, report. Without any objections, no. the report is received and filed. Thank you for the report. <clears throat> now you can hit the button. This is um, <laughs> item nine. So, um, <laughs> the keeping of it says keeping of chickens, hens, and our files in residential areas. Let's have the staff report concerning these chickens. Thank, thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Um, as brought to you before, uh, this is the history of <coughs> chickens, fowl, um, and what other cities are doing around in the South Bay area. So we stopped to take a look at uh, Hawthorne, Redondo Beach, uh, Manhattan Beach, and Torrance, which are more the nearest cities around us, and to take a look at what they're doing, whether or not they're allowing them in residential areas. Uh, most cities are, so if you take a look at Redondo Beach, they do allow them, but they do require a permit. They have a permit administrator, and this is through their animal control, where they require certain conditions for them to follow, and they would have to pay for a permit. So that, that's the way that they do it without, um, without a limit, and also making sure that the noise levels are not exceeded within residential areas. Um, in Manhattan Beach, there isn't a limit, but they do not allow roosters. That's specific, not, no roosters. And I, my take is because of the noise. It, it also, they don't have um, a permit required and they cannot be a nuisance. nuisance. Again, noise. Um, in the city of Hawthorne, they allow up to four hens in residential areas, but they must not be within 35 feet of any habitable dwelling or resident, residence which is what City of Lawndale is currently doing, not allowing them within 35 feet of residential. And that goes with the LA County's um, health and safety code. And, um, well, again, no roosters allowed. And um, City of Torrance, finally, they do require, require a special permit to allow it for single family residential and must meet conditions. And again, no roosters allowed. Um, staff does have concern because of the way that our city is, is built, because it's highly populated, because our lots are smaller than, than 50 feet, most of them are 40 feet, 25. We don't believe that, you know, we're going to meet the 35 foot requirement from, um, from health and safety codes. And well, you know, we have high density and it could impact the residents highly with noise if they do have more than required. They would need permits, they would need uh, to go through animal control, et cetera. So we do have concerns on that. Um, and well, we, we do, uh, this concludes staff report and it, it, it would be up to council. You could uh, keep the zoning codes as is, allowing chicken, poultry, fowl, so any other birds uh, within residential air, not allowing them within residential areas or direct staff to draft a specific ordinance for chicken, poultry, and hen, regulating and cons bringing it back to council for consideration, or lastly, uh, provide an alternative direction to staff. And that concludes staff report. Okay, thank you for that report. Uh, let's have a discussion. Yes, sir, let's have a speaker first. Yes, sir. Good evening. Once again, the community development manager had to take away from important duties to provide tonight's detailed report on whether to allow chickens in the city of Lawndale. How many approvals for projects were delayed so this report could be written? Having attended city council meetings for over 10 years, not once have I heard a resident come to the podium and plead for chickens in Lawndale, which is not Green Acres. I've heard residents bring forth school parking issues, illegal fireworks suppression, more recently the metro coming through the city, but not chickens. The fact that this is trending on social media does not make it important to residents of Lawndale. The staff report correctly recommends against allowing chickens in the city for a multitude of reasons. One reason that was not mentioned is the possibility of diseases that could be brought into the city if the chickens are not properly maintained. When I worked for the city of Inglewood, one detective contracted coptococcus meningitis due to pigeon droppings outside the police station. Common diseases from chickens include salmonella, listeria, campylobacter, and E. coli. 
How would the city monitor and regulate the health issues presented by backyard chickens? Would residents be allowed to operate as a business to sell the eggs, chicks, or, bro or broilers? There is no reasonable purpose to allow chickens in such a densely populated area. Hopefully this will be the last time that this issue is brought forth so that the city can focus on more substantial issues that the residents have brought forward. At the last city council meeting and tonight, residents requested the Metro be agendized at an upcoming meeting. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I was here at that meeting when the chicken discussion went on and it did, it took over 20, 25 minutes talking about chickens and eggs and everything. We don't need chickens in this city. Nobody's gonna get a permit, they're gonna get loose. They don't pick up their dog stuff, let alone they're gonna pick up their chicken stuff. They're gonna wash it down to the curb or whatever, into the drain or what even then. We don't need chickens running around and everything. And then what about when they get killed or something or they get hit or an animal again attacks the chicken and now they gotta, you know, what's the city gonna do about the attacking chickens? We don't need the chickens, okay? Buy the eggs at the store. They're, they're always on sale or whatever. Thank you. Okay, let's have some discussion now. Who wants to? Well, I'll start first? since I'm the one that brought this forward. And contrary to some of the comments that were made, I actually did have several residents, several young families actually, their families uh, who I know who grew up in the area, um, you know, who asked about this and for whatever reason, you know, they may or not be here. I can ask them to come too so that we have, you know, more of uh, so they can voice their opinions. But I think that it, although it may not be important to some and some may disregard it, I bring it forward because, you know, there's a certain generation of young families that for whatever, you know, their reasons might be, maybe they want to eat more organic or healthy or whatnot. So, th so that's the reason why I bring it up. And, you know, everybody has their different takes on what's important to them, um, you know. And so that's something that I felt, you know, hey, why are they banned if neighboring cities? And that's why I wanted to look at it. And as far as taking up staff time, you know, I've done some of the research myself. And with Google, you'd be surprised how fast you can kind of get through you know, reports and zoning, I've called up other cities, and I've done it for other items as well, you know, so it, it doesn't take that much time. Um, and then as far as diseases and whatnot, yes, that, that is a possibility, but is it probable? Um, you know, you could say the same thing for dogs, you know, rabies, there are rodents that run, um, possums. Um, I know growing up we had a, a huge uh, lot, and there were a lot of times that we had other animals coming in. So I, you know, you, you gotta kind of, if you kind of go with the mindset that this and this could happen, this and this, um, you know, then you're gonna have to ban everything. Um, and so that's the reason I brought it forward. I w it wasn't with the intention for people to have millions of chickens. And I do agree, I don't think that, um, you know, I don't think that it's, people probably aren't gonna come and get a permit. Um, but it's for the people that, if they do want to, you know, giving them the option. Um, and so that, that's the reason why I bring it forward. I think that we've come to a place where we've tried to ban a lot of stuff that I think, you know, some people would enjoy. Um, and that's why I brought it forward. I did have a specific question with regards to staff, because you brought up the, I guess, you know, and I agree, I don't think they should be in apartment buildings. I don't think they should be in closed space areas. I guess my question is how many homes are actually, would be large enough that we, you know, is it a possibility that, you know, for example, s some houses still have fairly huge lots, you know, and, and for those, if they have it, you know, it, do we know approximately how many would be eligible with the county guidelines? Uh, um, I'm not exactly sure, like the number, but I know that there's a few properties with like 8,000, 10,000 square foot lots in the city, but they're very minimal. Most of our lots are 40 to 50 um, feet wide in the front by 100, so it would be like 5,000, 6,000 square feet. So I'm not sure if there's enough lots. They're just very minimal, as from what I remember. Okay, so we have on top of that layer of the ban and then 
the county has their requirements for the 35 feet. Correct. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, I'm still interested in looking at this, um, maybe just for single family or even for duplexes. Um, for all the reasons that I stated, I understand that the rest of the council may not be interested. Uh, maybe it's just a thing for my generation that people are interested in looking at. I don't know. Um, but I would be interested in keeping, you know, even if it's like one to two hens, you know, in, in a certain enclosed space, um, you know, I'd be interested in looking at it. But I don't want to waste anyone's time if the rest of the council's not interested. Anyone have any discussion on it? Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, I do agree with Bernadette. Uh, growing up in the West Side, we grew up having little chicks and then growing into hens. Um, I don't mind having maybe single family homes and, and duplex within a specific area um, and no more than two hens, no roosters. Um, but we, we, We've been forbidding or putting laws into place and not allowing our citizens to, those that want to have a hen or something, um, not to do it. We are in a different era, so things have changed. The, uh, unfortunately, my generation doesn't want hens, but the current uh, generation does, so I don't mind. Um, having at least two hands, uh, two hands would be my maximum on there. Okay. Thank, thank you for that. Those comments. Anyone else want? And I have to disagree with my two colleagues. I don't think chickens should be allowed in Londo. If you want, you know, we're overpopulated, and if you look at a square footage of house, you can't keep chickens pinned up all day. They have to roam. And most of these lots, when they roam, they'll be 35 feet away from the next dwelling. Well built out, I have to agree with the staff recommendation. Uh, and my biggest fear is a disease. We had the big scare of the egg disease. And the eggs went up. Now they're, they're back down to normal prices. We don't need to check it. What's, what's going to be next? Because are goats going to be allowed? Because we had goats at one time? <coughs> or... Hawthorne had cattle ranches, dairy ranches. We're going to have cattle. Uh, I have to strict with what the staff says. L.A. County says uh, 35 feet. No, uh, I disagree with the ladies, and I say there no, should be no chickens in Londo. I would just like to add into it on top of what Pat is saying. I also disagree, but my disagreement I would add on top of is if one hen produces one egg a day if you're lucky. So if we have two hens or even four hens, that's going to be two eggs or four eggs in a day. I, do, I don't understand how, you know, that's going to be a great big savings. It might be as far as the organic part of it and wanting to eat organic, but it's not going to feed you very long, I don't feel. But you're never going to get that great big bowl of fresh eggs from two chickens. So I'm opposed to this as well. Um, I would say that um, I'm not uh, exactly opposed to it. I'm not totally sold on it, but I'm not opposed to it, and not necessarily because of the whether or not you can, you know, um, produce eggs, enough eggs to eat or what have you. I think if, if you if you if you for it, I'm for it whether the, whether the hens can produce eggs or not. I'm opposed to roosters primarily because the roosters make way too much noise. Heckling out or whatever they whatever they do, they don't heckle, I guess, whatever they do. Um, noise they make all day, so I'm opposed to, to roosters. I don't really see, I mean, I mean, I see, I, I hear the argument about the disease and all this kind of stuff, but there's communities that, that have chickens or what have you, and do they have these diseases uh, running around ramp, rampant? I don't know, I haven't seen that, that type of data. Um, even if you had a chicken for, 
far as I'm concerned, even if you had like one chicken, I mean, I wouldn't want to see a whole bunch of chickens just running around like you know we're we're on a farm. But if you had one, ch if you had one one chicken, even if even if it was a, a pet, yeah. you know, you, you're not even thinking about you know frying it up, you know, <laughs> or producing eggs, whatever. It's just a pet. I don't know if I'm disturbed by that or, or not. I think you know they're domesticated enough to. Um, to have a, as pets, um, if that's what, because people do buy these, these unfortunately, buy these little chicks during the holidays and then after Easter is over or whatever, they realize, oh, what am I gonna do with this, right? And unfortunately, you know, they usually um, meet their demise and that's unfortunate, but if they was able to keep one as a pet or what have you, I don't know if I would be disturbed by that, you know? So that's why I'm saying I'm not, oppo I'm not opposed to it and to, for all those um, other reasons, the diseases and things, because I don't know if that's, if that's a real thing. It's something that could happen. Obviously, that, you know, one chicken, you know, but just like um, the councilman was saying, you can get one rabbit dog, you know, as well, that could um, foster some type of disease or what have you, or, uh, public health, you know, crisis or what have you. But if you had one or two chickens, I don't think that's gonna cause some type of public health crisis in, um, so I'm okay with it from, from that regards because I'd like to see may, maybe some more information on it. If there's even more information that we need in terms of at least dismissing the fact that diseases and things of that nature, right? If I'm okay, if, I, if, it's, if you can show that there's some diseases and all this kind of stuff to be worried about, then that's something to can be concerned about, right? And I don't know the answer to that. It just doesn't seem like to me there's, you know, there's, that kind of stuff going on. Well, there, there's that stuff going on in the food industry. I mean, the fruits are recalled and all of that. And so I, I guess my thing is, yes, there's a possibility, but is it probable? Um, and part of the code from the other cities does state, you know, the manner in which you're to keep these animals, which would be the same we would require of a dog, of a cat. I mean, we have cats, you know, running around that they, they're carrying diseases, oh, like I said. Cats. So, you know. I guess I don't know that that's an argument. And then the other one that I wanted to make, it's not just the prices of eggs, but some people actually use them for educational purposes, like you said, pets mm -hmm. and their kids, um, you know, kind of having them learn um, or for whatever reason, so. I would be probably in favor of having, um, having a permit just so that we can regulate them so that we can, I guess, greater ensure that people following the rules concerning, concerning them and they don't have over the amount that we're allowed to have or what have you. Um, because we, do, we don't permit cats, but cats, although, although for some reason I don't know why you don't permit cats, but, um, but we do certainly of dogs or what have you. Um, I don't know, maybe that's a way of regulating them by having permits. I mean, I'm not if if they sure. get permits. Look at many of the dogs we have running around Lawndale without license. So yeah. would, would it, I mean, I think it's for those that are going to follow that I'm bringing it forward, giving them the option. Um, I mean, it's the same thing with the fences. You know, we create a permit, but it, I mean, staff had said 90% are brought by code violations. People don't go out and say, hey, I want to be compliant. Let me do a fence. So. Hmm. There's something to ponder. Well, I would be in favor of doing it. I'm not. I'm okay with a permit or a license. You know the way we do the dogs. I don't even mind if it's one to two. You know, and then um, making it a. You know single family or, or something like that, um, or mm -hmm. even duplexes. Some of them are pretty big lots, um, but that's just me. Now, if you had a duplex, would that mean both duplexes would be entitled to one or two um, hens? Or are you looking at the parcel itself, since mm -hmm. it's one parcel? That's something we could look at too, yeah. maybe just limiting it to the whole parcel. To the parcel, yeah, because otherwise there would be four, because we're talking about two, right? Yeah. Yeah, because if it was if it was a duplex. Well, before we well, use duplexes, 
tied together in one, one parcel. I guess what I meant to say, not a duplex, so a duplex is, is, is usually you know, one, one unit into um, um, two. But I guess I meant to say more of um, two units on a parcel. So that wouldn't necessarily be a duplex, right? Be two units on yeah. one parcel. So if it's two units on one parcel, not a duplex, are we looking at still just a parcel itself or the fact that there's two units? So each unit would be. But you could have a parcel with six units. But right, right. So That's what I'm saying. So it would have a parcel with two units would be each unit is two. So it's the parcel itself the parcel. two. And so if you have a parcel with, with so basically if you have a parcel with two units, right. Two units or less, you could do it. I, I would suggest, I mean, you don't want townhomes with them because yeah. there's no area that they could be. But duplexes generally will have some kind of a yard or something, or I don't even know if they're big enough. But yeah. Um, well, before we vote on this, I have to have Councilwoman Swords bring back some of the young generation that want chickens but we don't so have we can to, hear from them. Yeah. But we don't have to. Um, I think that's a little. Well, uh, you, know, we you said stuff. you could bring it back. You can bring some. Okay, I will. I will. Okay. So that's it. We said direct staff to draft the chicken and poultry blah, 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 about for the city, the city council. Okay. And if not, I'll have them write into it as well, depending on what their schedules look like. But this would be asking the, the, the staff, directing the staff to draft, you know, not the adoption thereof anyway, so there would yeah, be another so opportunity. Yeah, so we could still them, direct yeah. it, and then it would still need to be voted on. Yeah, so we're not voting on, on that tonight. We vo we're voting as to whether or not to direct the staff to do a draft. That's correct, Mr. Mayor and Council. So you have three options there. We gave you three options to uh, decide from. Keep the zoning code. There's not a Well, I don't mind if the, if the staff um, do a, a draft and that gives us time for if anyone else want to weigh in, including the young folks to want to weigh in before we um, um, vote on it, because this is just a draft, so we can see what, what it would look like. Okay. If that's the direction that's, that's of the me. council. What is the, anyone else? So. I think we should do C, provide alternative direction to staff until we get letters in. What? Provide alternate direction to staff. It's not a requirement, though, to have people come up. This body was elected by the voters, so we Correct. are allowed to bring it forward. So. so I would go with recommendation C, bring a resolution. I'll make that motion. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Do you mean uh, a draft ordinance? Not yes. A draft. Thank you, ma'am. Did I say B? No, C? you just said resolution, but I want to oh, make yeah. sure we do it right. Thank you. And we'll, um, I'll work with the Community Development Department. We'll listen to what you've said tonight. It's, it's pretty clear we have two in favor with some limitations, two opposed, and one who needs to see how the program would work before he'll cast his vote one way or the other. So we'll take into account what we've been hearing and, and bring that to you in the next couple months. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll second so we've got another. Councilwoman Suarez. Uh, so the motion has been made by Suarez and seconded by um, Cuevas that we direct staff to bring back the draft um, ordinance. Okay, any discussion on the motion itself? Okay, seeing on with this. Please vote. Yeah. For item number nine, the motion passes with Council Member Kearney and <coughs> Council Member Hoffman Gorman voting no. All right, thank you, madam. Next item is the city manager's report. No items report tonight, Mr. Mayor and Council. All right, thank you for that report. Okay, let's hear from um, Councilman Hoffman Gordon. Well, I attended <coughs> the Easter event at both William Green School and also at Jane Addams School. Lovely, congratulations to our community development department. Excellent job at both schools. I did not get to see um, the Jane Addams in full. Uh, by the time I got there, it was, it was pretty late, but 
beautiful job, fun day, I think, for all the, the kids and the families. Um, just an enjoyable day to finally get to enjoy some spring weather, so I appreciated that. I also wanted to take a moment and remind the citizens that on the 22nd, this Saturday, is our annual Youth Day Parade. And that's an exciting time for our kids. They get to come and show off their little <coughs> little league jersey or, you know, compete in the band or the drill team or the flags. And it, it's just a time of bringing your, the community together. So I'm really excited this year about finally getting back to the parade. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Mr. Pat Curry. And I was going to mention the parade, but Rhonda did. I also attended the Easter egg hunt, extravaganza, egg extravaganza, extravaganza. at Jane Adams. It was well attended. Uh, the kids loved it. They had a lot of um, events for the children. And it was well put together, Mike, you and your staff. Kudos. Very good. Councilman Suarez. Um, I'm going to steal your thing. Ditto. It was a great event. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed it. And um, I did. I was able to go to the second one, but later on. Um, and, um, you know, there were, there were some uh, um, really, there were older kids there, too. So it was very interesting to see, you know, the, the um, range of, of kids we had there. But... Um, they they really did run and get their their golden eggs. I even saw them lifting up the haystacks um, to, <laughs> to see if there were eggs under those. So, um, but that was really fun. Um, and then I, I think that's all I had. So I'll pass along. Okay, Madam Cuevas. Mine is short. Thank you, Mike and staff, for the Easter egg hunt. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend. I was doing my taxes, so I couldn't attend. But a lot of our residents really enjoyed it and gave us great feedback. Um, I also want to thank staff uh, and Sean because we had some complaints about the railroad track, the row. Um, there was a lot of trash, uh, several cables were hanging, and they took care of that today. So thank you staff for doing that. And I don't have anything else to report today, so we get to go home early. <laughs> Well, we got Robert's today. Or we can wait another, oh, can wait. An, yeah, we can wait an, another yeah. 10 minutes on you <laughs> oh, for the rest of your, um, <laughs> your report. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I want to thank uh, Mike and his staff for um, putting on um, the extravaganza, Easter extravaganza. <laughs> it was, in fact, an extravaganza. I like saying that word, huh? Extravaganza. Yeah. Extravaganza. Extravaganza, extravaganza. yep. Um, both at um, William Green's and um, Jane Adams uh, uh, Park, um, really nice, uh, nicely attended. Um, William Green, there's a lot of people at, at William Green, a lot of um, f families, a um, lot of visitors. There were some visitors from Hawthorne, some visitors from Carson. And um, one lady told me that she had saw the sign, but there was from Carson, and she brought her um, daughter um, down. So that was great. We had a, a good time there. Um, and Jane Adams was, was good as, as well. So that was nicely, um, good, great job, everyone, on that. Yeah, I expect to see everyone out for the, um, the Youth Day Parade, those who can make it in the, in the city. Um, bring all the, the youth out. Um, what time we kick off, at 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. We kick off at 10 o'clock, but you, you want to get a seat around about 9 o'clock so you can be in a good position. You know, um, so we should have a lot of fun there. Um, I did have the opportunity to, to meet the, um, well, in her position as Vice President, Carmela um, Harris, um, Vice President. Of course, I met her before when she was um, a state, um, here in, uh, a state official um, at the, um, LAX. So I was invited by Supervisor Holly Mitchell to join a group of folks in greeting the, uh, the Vice President. I guess that was a few days ago. And um, it, was a, it was a good good time to get to see Air Force um, 2 you know, land. And I saw you. Like that. That was pretty good. I saw you. Facebook. You saw me? Yeah, oh, yeah. You're Several good. pictures. <laughs> okay. Very good. Um, very good. She was um, well received, and that was a, a good experience um, seeing her as vice president you know, for the first time. And I think that's all I have. Yeah. So we see everybody Saturday. With that... We do have a couple of adjournments tonight. Um, 
I'm going to do one in council, woman Hoffman Gorman. She's going to do the first one. You want to take away the, the, the first one, um, councilwoman, to Thank adjourn you. tonight. And um, go, go ahead, take it away. So we lost a longtime resident, Laura Thomas Osborne, this past Thursday, April 13th, in Torrance, California. Her grandparents were among the first settlers in Lawndale purchasing land in 1908. Her mother owned, opened the Lawndale Library in 1913 and later became the first postmistress in 1918. Her father opened the first service station in about 1919. As a child, Laura knew many of the original pioneering families of Lawndale. She attended Lawndale Grammar School and Central School, later becoming the Lucille J. Smith Elementary School. She graduated from Lusinger High School, class of 1945, and afterwards attended El Camino College the year it was opened in 1946 when classes were being held at nearby high school campuses before the future home site we know today was open. She worked a variety of jobs, including the Lawndale Library during World War II. She later married Carl Osborne and had two sons, Tom and Jim, and remained in Lawndale for over 90 years. She was one of the founding members of the South Bay Quilters Guild and for several decades created quilts and stuffed animals for local children's hospitals. An interesting side note, if anybody has the book, Images of America, Lawndale, that was written by Jim Osborne, our former council member, it is his mom, Laura Thomas Osborne, on the cover, holding the goats. Thank you. Thank you, we will adjourn her memory tonight. Also, we have a, a young man who um, served on the El Camino Board of Trustees, Kevin A. Brown. He's a member of the El Camino College Board of Trustees, um, um, president and Inglewood representative, as well as Inglewood um, resident. He passed away on March the 23rd. He was 54 years of age. He was an advocate for student success, and he left a deep void at El Camino uh, campus. His professional successes were numerous and exceptional. He was an inspiration that reaches high and reached far. His many achievements earned him the Black Engineer of the Year Award, the Modern Day Technology Leadership Award in 2019. He was an adjunct professor of, of physics and he taught primarily physical science as well as science. He is survived by his wife of 25 years, Dr. Carla, Harshness Brown and his son Kenneth II and Caleb Brown, his son as well. The Lawndale City Council extends the condolence to the Brown family for the loved one, um, Kevin Brown. He go by the name of Kevin, what his name was Kenneth um, um, Brown, El Camino um, um, president. We will adjourn his name as well in his memory. With that, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Lawndale City Council will be held at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, May the 1st, 2023, in these here chambers. It is now 8.03. We are adjourned. <laughs>